<clears throat> hey guys, um, this is kind of a new setup and um, definitely haven't been doing videos since Vlogmas and there is a reason why. Um, I'm sorry if it seems kind of echoey in here and um, I know if the lighting, I'm working on like actually having lighting. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get this video out and explain to you guys the reasons why I haven't been vlogging since I think like day 20 of Vlogmas and haven't been posting any videos. Um, today is the first day and, and let me preface this by saying that I have vlogged this so many times and tried to film this video and each time I just... I don't feel like I say the right thing or I don't convey the right emotion or I'm just a mess and I'm an emotional just like disaster and and I feel like today is the first day that I've been able to go okay maybe maybe I can do this um, so um, I guess we'll just get started uh, as most of you know I am a caregiver for my grandmother. Uh, she's 90 years old and she's bed bound. Um, and on December 23rd, she was very like lethargic. She wasn't really herself when I woke her up. Um, and I called the nurses to have them come over and check her. She was, you know, she was talking and stuff like that, but she just, and then when I noticed she didn't want to eat and drink, I called 911 because I knew something was, was wrong. Um, and I'll probably make a completely different video about, like, the details of what happened because, honestly, at this point, I don't really even have any details. Uh, so anyways, December 23rd, we sent her in. Actually, no, December 22nd. December 22nd, we sent her in. Um, and... From what I had heard from the EMTs and the nurses when I told them her symptoms, they just figured she was dehydrated because she's a very tough woman who like says, well, I don't want to drink water. I want to drink hot cocoa and ginger ale, you know. Um, so we figured she probably just wasn't getting enough water. So we sent her in and we weren't allowed to see her for a few hours. And finally, when a doctor had come out, he had told us that she's incredibly sick. And we went, what? What do you mean she's incredibly sick? What's wrong with her? And what they had assumed was that she had a sepsis. And for those of you that don't know, sepsis is a um, infection of the blood, basically. And it's very lethal in the elderly. Um, so we didn't see her for a while. Um, when she left the house, she told me that she loved me. And I just kind of brush it off because I mean she's gone to the hospital before and acted like you know something was like the end of the world and and I really didn't think it was as serious so she was talking and she was speaking um, I saw her about five hours later she was admitted to the ICU and she was completely not there anymore she was just laying there like a vegetable and when I told her I was there she could barely open her eyes and just kind of that's it. That's all she could do to try to move her mouth. Um, so when I talked to the nurse who was the worst nurse I had ever met in my life, I hated her so much. Um, she told me that she believed that she had sepsis and a, and a GI bleed and all of these serious things that, you know, we had had nurses there a couple days beforehand that had checked her pulse and her rate and everything. She was perfectly healthy. Um, and they said, that, you know, she went from zero to 60 very fast. And there are some things I question, honestly, um, when she went into the hospital and the way that she went downhill so fast. And I don't think I'm really getting all the answers that I deserve in this. We were sent home on December 22nd. And my mom and I, we couldn't sleep because we were just terrified um, of getting a call that we were not ready for. So... We woke up on December 23rd, and my uncle had called us, and he said, hurry down here. They don't think that she's going to make it through the morning, which was just shocking because we had no idea it was this serious, and she's she's been so healthy. I mean, the reason why she's bed bound was because she had um, spinal stenosis. She had all kinds of back issues, but health-wise, 
she'd only been on like one medication and she was just incredibly healthy. Um, so I, I rushed the kids and I tried to get them together and I was trying to get them into the, the car and we got to the hospital and we rushed to the parking lot and I remember stopping midway in the parking lot looking at my mother and saying, something happened. And I said, I feel like somebody's taking the breath right out of me. So when we got to the ICU, I had to stay with the kids because the kids aren't allowed in. And my mother went in and she came out a couple, like a minute later. And she told me she passed. <laughs> See, this is why I can't vlog this. Um, so, we were told that she probably passed when we were in the parking lot. That's how close we were. And it kills me because I had been there for her through everything. And the moment that she said goodbye, I wasn't there. And when she told me she loved me and that she didn't want to die, when she left the house, I shrugged it off. And I feel horrible. And I, 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 this is like, what, three weeks later? Not even three weeks later, I think. And I just feel, I still feel dead inside. Like, I don't, I don't know. There are good days and there's bad days. But anyways, um, she passed away at like 10 o'clock that morning. And my mother convinced me to go in and see her one last time. And she looked so different. She was not the woman that I knew less than 24 hours ago. Uh, my uncle said he was there. And my aunt told me that when she passed, she couldn't open her eyes or move her mouth ever since she got there. But suddenly she looked up past them and she, she opened her eyes and she looked up past them and she smiled and she said, Mama, Mama, and she called out to her mother. And then she took her last breath. And in and, and that it gives me hope and, and peace, you know what I mean, knowing that her mother came to get her. And, and I know I probably may even have atheist viewers and people who don't believe in heaven and earth and, you know, the heaven and hell and all those things and just please, you know, Respect, respect my views on this. Um, I do know that she's in heaven now and that she's with her Heavenly Father and she's with her family and she's happy and she's young and she's beautiful and she's free of all of these sicknesses and, and back problems and she has not a single worry and that just makes me so happy. But in the meantime, we're left here on the earth and we're, what do we do from here? <laughs> I feel like I'm being fake, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm not quite conveying how I feel right now and it's just because I've cried so much that I don't know, I don't know if I can cry anymore, you know? Um, Christmas was really hard. That day that she had passed away I had to go to the store and get wrapping paper for the kids and I had to wrap their presents on Christmas Eve and walk through her bedroom and put the presents under the tree. And and I did it. I still did it. I gave them a great Christmas and they had a wonderful time. But in the meantime, I felt, I don't know. Right now, where I'm filming was her bedroom. And I know that sounds weird, but what she had told me when she was always talking about passing away and her plans and the things that she wanted, she talked about this for a long time. I'm not sure if it's like the Ukrainian heritage, but I know that we Ukrainians are very, very serious about our deaths. Like we want to have our outfits picked out and what we're going to hold in the coffin and we want to have our pictures taken when we're, when we're in the coffin. It's just things that I don't, I can't do. Like I remember my, my mother asked me um, at the funeral if I would be willing to take pictures and I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It was, no. The only thing I got a picture of was of the hearse and that was it. And I just, I, I couldn't. I don't, I know it's a Ukrainian tradition, I guess, um, but I just, I can't. Um, so anyways, what she had told me when she was planning all of these things, she says if she ever passed away, she wanted me to make this room into a playroom for the boys because she wanted me to take all of the sadness from this place and turn it into something happy. 
so that's what I did. Um, you can't really tell because of the view, and I'll maybe show you afterwards, but you know, there's toys everywhere, and there's things like that for the kids. Um, and it's, it's been turned into a playroom. They have their TV, and they have still pictures of their grandmother around, and their great-grandmother, um, and a, and a needlepoint that she had done. And we have those things. It's just... I don't know. The, the thing is, and, and honestly, the way that I feel, is that I feel happy for her. Because I know she's happy. She's going to be so happy. You know, so thrilled to be to be free. You know, and, and to not have any more pain. And, and have to worry about asking somebody to feed her because she can't get out of bed. You know, and then, I mean, that's going to feel so good. And she was 90, which was wonderful. I mean, the thing is, is we didn't expect it to happen so fast. So in the meantime, um, I've lost my job, of course, because I was her legal caregiver and she's no longer here. Um, the company called me to tell me they want to come take my laptop because that's what they gave me to do my work on. And, and for some reason, I want to hold on to the laptop, not feel like the technological wanting to have a laptop at all. It's because we used to do videos together. We used to, I used to take my the little laptop and it was a little um, Acer laptop and I would put on Ukrainian videos on YouTube for her and we'd watch them together and that made me so happy and I like I have a connection to that even though it's just an object so it's going to be really hard for me to get that up. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of looking around and this is her space and it just feels so weird without her. And I don't know, I've lost the connection to this house. I always felt like if we had to move or if, you know, we had to renovate or anything, like I would, I would be upset because I'm so attached to everything in this house. But ever since she's, she's gone, I, I don't feel that way anymore. I don't know. Um, I just, I feel like, today I feel happy for her. And... I still wake up every single night thinking I hear her. I still have dreams that she's alive. I still, every time I walk by her bedroom door, I automatically think about walking in to check on her. And I just can't believe she's gone. And I don't have any answers. Like we, They still won't tell me what exactly happened to her. Um, they, even on the death certificate, there's, they, they haven't come up with anything yet, they're still doing testing, you know, and it's just, and I don't know if it'll help me to know exactly what happened, but I feel like it would, because, you know, you always in your mind think, could I have done something more, and, and, you know, that's why I don't, I want to wait to make a separate video about the details that happened, because honestly, I feel like there was a lot of, a lot of what people didn't take me seriously because I was concerned about her beforehand and I called the doctor's office and the nurses and, and nobody listened to me. They all thought it was okay, we'll just wait until Monday, you know, and it's just something was off and I don't know, that's just kind of the way I am. Um, so I kind of want to make a video later when I know more details on that. But in the time being, I just want to let you guys know why I haven't been on YouTube. I kind of want to just get past this video and move on to uploading again and making things. Because honestly, I don't know what our future is going to be. And that's scary as heck to me. Because I've always known what our future is going to be. I've always felt like we had somebody to depend on. Or we had ourselves to depend on. Or we had... The thing is, I'm very thankful for the church. Our church, I'm LDS, Mormon. And the church had been so amazing um, at that time. They came over, they brought meals and presents and, and pies and all kinds of things, you know, and toys for the kids. And they were amazing and so supportive, and I cannot thank them enough for that. It's just hard not to feel like you're completely alone sometimes. And I miss her, and I, I feel like I should have done more. I was the last person she talked to. Okay, 
video is getting too heavy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so that's kind of what has happened. It's been about three weeks, I guess. I don't know. Um, her funeral was the following Monday. And it was quite the nightmare, actually, because I found out that um, the other side of my family is very unsupportive. Um, my cousin, I basically think he's a monster. And it hurts so much to think that my family's like that. He, um, he said some very hurtful things to people that he didn't say it to me. He didn't even look at me. He refused to even look in my direction. And he just kind of just brushed everybody off. And, you know, the rest of the family went out and had dinner afterwards and left us by ourselves. And we thankfully had the church that put on kind of like a luncheon type of thing. Um, but it, it's just, you know, you find out, I don't know. I'm hoping my uncle is still the good person I think he is. Um, I know that, you know, my, my mom and him were getting close again, and I hope that it stays that way. Uh, anyways, I'm sure this video is forever long, and nobody really wants to hear these things. <laughs> Who wants to hear about depressing things? Um, but I figure I'll show you kind of what the room looks like um, and give you a little view on that. This is one of the pictures of my grandmother when she was with her brother. That's her brother. And he went off to war uh, and never came back. So she doesn't even know what happened to him. She really doesn't believe that he passed away so he could be out there somewhere. Uh, and this is the needle point that she had done. Back when my mom lived out in California before she had me. And those are her initials. And that's a picture of my, so, well, or her brother, I don't know <laughs> what would he be to me. Um, and then we have some pictures over here of everybody. That's my, my grandmother, my grandfather, and that is my great-grandmother, and my grandmother, and me. Everything's kind of blurry, um, but... We have that up. And then I just kind of have like the kids' toys here and stuff. I mean, I just took out a whole bunch of toys because they just weren't taking care of the area. So, you know, kind of have some stuff like that and then a TV. But, so that's about it. But I just wanted you guys to know what was going on. And um, I want to get past this and make some fun videos again for you guys. And, you know, if you do, if you do want to see videos of me talking about like how I'm, how I'm getting through this and you know, the story of kind of what happened or, you know, what I believe in and, and things like that, you know, let me know below. And I will try to do a video for you guys, but I just wanted you to know so that, uh, just get past this point. I don't know what else to say. Alright, I love you guys so much and, um, I'll see you in the next video.